This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melt and craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 33 through 518 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle, celebrating 50 years doing what we're doing, and we got the clothes to go along with it. Oh, yeah. That's a good fashion, man. Yep, some sweet trucker caps, baby. Oh, listen, it's getting, it's, it's going to get another sunny, warm day. Get that 50th anniversary trucker cap. And for those cool mornings, you need a light zip hoodie, not a regular thick, you know, hoodie that you would in the normal wintertime stuff and falltime stuff. This is just, you know, it's a little cool. Maybe there's a drizzle, but then next thing you know, hey, you roll up the sleeves, pull down the hoodie, and you're ready for a nice day. Damn it. And, of course, it's got the golden 50th anniversary rock logo emblazoned on all of that stuff. We got a lot of good stuff. You got to go check it out at the Rock Shop. Limited edition, limited time, 50th anniversary merch available now at KISW.com. Let's play B-Mix. It's time to play the game. So everybody scream his name. B-Mix, don't be a The rev is out and Sarah's in. That's right. And it's Thursday, so let's get cracking. Release the Kraken. Really, let's get cracking all week long because we finally have a team. Uh, it's so nice to have some names and some players. And uh, granted, a lot of those guys probably won't be with the team by the time the, the, the season starts. They, they make a lot of changes and trades and signings and things like that. But we got a good core of some defensemen and goalies, man. I'm pretty excited. A couple good forwards as well. Yes, yeah. me too. And our jerseys or sweaters or whatever you want to call them are so sexy. Are you uh, a fan of the home or the away, the, the blue or the white? You know, I actually really love them both, but I was surprised how much I like the away ones. Everybody's raving about the yeah, white jerseys. Yeah, the jersey. road sweaters look good when it was on it. When they were, when you finally saw them on a body, you're like, mm-hmm. that looks good. But they're white, and I can never wear a white. It's too dangerous for me. I will spill everything on it. There'll be a lot of box room. wine on that jersey. Oh, yeah. so much. And br- bright red on white, it does not work. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to this game, shall we? Okay. Today, we have Nat from Shoreline. Nat, are you there? Hello, Nat. Hey, Matt. Nat. Nat. Uh, Nat's Hello. engaged. I don't... Nat? Hello. Nat. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello. Wait, wait, wait. What's your name? Who's, who am I talking to? What's, What's your name? Up? What? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Huh? I can hear you. What happened? I don't know. Can you hear you guys? I hear you, but can you hear us? And yeah. who are you talking to? <laughs> I'm talking to Sarah. Oh, hello. Okay, you can hear us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. good. We're off to good. a good start. Maybe yeah, sweet. I don't think that is this, is this Nat? I heard you guys the whole time. I heard you guys the whole time. So. I heard no. you the whole time, too. Okay, sure. Is, uh, right. is this you Matt or, said your name is Nat, though. It is Matt. Yeah, is it, sure. You mean Matt, like Matthew, Matt? Yeah, Matthew. Oh, okay. Uh, what right. do you think, say? I mean, let me talk to my son. How, what man do you know whose Thank name you. is Nat? Thank you. Jesus. I actually Nat specific- King Cole. 
What? Okay, thanks, thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks for sticking up for the genius that is my son. I legit asked him, is it Nat like the bug? And he said yes. And I was uh, like, maybe it's Natalie. Who knows? I, that's why I thought for sure we had a wrong number. I it thought could we be Nathaniel. Nat. I have a buddy, Nat, Nathaniel, that goes by Nat. Oh, t- t- you're giving Joey too much credit. Okay, here, great, Steve. fine. <laughs> okay, Matt, are you there? I am here. All right, are, all right, all right. Okay, we're good now. All right, Steve, know. now get out. Yeah, get find, out. Oh, my God. To find good. <laughs> yeah. Take that with you. This is going to be the best. Be- this is going to be a mess. All right, for those playing at home, Matt has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready, Matt? We're ready. All right. Three cheers for Sweet Revenge and the Black Parade are albums by what band? Yeah. <laughs> um, Black Sabbath. No. Yeah. How many seasons did the Big Bang Theory have? Nine. No. Eleven. No. Seven. No. Oh. What state is directly below Oklahoma? Texas. Yes. What fast food restaurant used the slogan, Where's the Beef? Arby's? No. Where's the Beef? Um, Pat. Oh. Who directed the 2019 film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Who played Regina George in the movie Mean Girls? Um, that would be. Uh, oh man, uh, Elizabeth Smart? No. Pass? Pass. Joe Swanson is a character from what animated sitcom? Family Guy. Yes. The state flag of Wyoming has the silhouette of what animal? Um, a turkey. No. Three correct. Oh. Well. Um, yeah, that was yeah. a little bit of oh a my struggle. God. Yeah, the struggle but was a bit real. Maybe it would have been better if he was Nat, not Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Nat would have done better. I know. I should have just kept with it. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe you would have gotten a few more. But you never know. I mean, here comes Steve. Hi. Maybe he's going to have a bad day. Maybe. Steve, are you ready? Yes! Release the Kraken. Three cheers for Sweet Revenge and the Black Parade are albums by what band? My Chemical Romance. Yes. How many seasons did the Big Bang Theory have? Ten. No. Nine. No. Eleven. No. Oh. What state is directly below Oklahoma? Alabama? No. Uh, Mississippi? <laughs> no. Texas? Yes. Ha! What fast food restaurant used the slogan, where's the beef? Wendy's. Yes. Where Who directed the, the 2019 film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Martin Scorsese? No. Quentin Tarantino? Yes. Nice. Who played Regina George in the movie Mean Girls? Oh, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. No. Um, what's her name? <laughs> I can see her, but I can't. Lindsay Lohan. No. Oh. Um, oh, Samuel L. Jackson. That's it? <laughs> no. Joe Swanson is a character from what animated sitcom? Futurama? No. Family Guy? Yes. Nice. The state flag of Wyoming has the silhouette of what animal? A honey badger. No. A beaver. <laughs> no. A uh, donkey. No. Okay. One, two, three, four, five correct. The yeah. sixth correct, actually. Okay, then. And you won. Oh, Thank you. Sorry. Six to three. Sorry, Matt. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Indeed. It was very fun. The trying to figure out fun. It was Ooh. something. It was fun. Get a better phone next time, Matt. <laughs> uh, and Joey should hear better. Well, yeah, the phone was a beating. Joey was a beating. Steve is a beating. <laughs> I mean, I won. Yeah. No, I'm all a winner. It. You're the beating. Uh, no. All if you think everybody's beating. a beating around you, maybe you're the one that's the beating. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Yeah, fine. I bet you know, though, how many seasons do the Bang Big, Big, Big Bang Theory have? I'm very surprised, actually. I didn't think it was that much. Is it 12? It is. I didn't really say 12 seasons. I would have said like 10 to 11. Wow. Nope, they got 12. And who played Regina George in the movie Mean Girls? Vicky one of my this. favorites. Rachel Vicky McAdams. Knows. Yes. That's the one. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha, uh-huh, Steve. <laughs> Come on. She was in The Notebook. That other yeah. other famous role she played. What's and wrong with you? Doctor Strange. Well, I don't think people really remember her a whole lot in that, Just unfortunately. Me. She had like five minutes in that movie, really, when you yeah, think about it. But I never watched The Notebook, so... Uh, uh, you must. You, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, I've never seen it. She's too cool for that. Wait, what? you are a you are a Famali and have never oh, watched Famali. the you've never watched the Notebook. I That's thought like it was a like Famali, but just you know, yeah, fancier. yeah. <laughs> I thought every woman was supposed. 
I thought every woman in Danny was supposed to watch The Notebook. <laughs> oh, I I've that's watched how it was supposed notebook. to go. I've right. seen The Notebook, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I want to tie Vicky down and make her watch it, but she won't let me. Wow. Yeah, that's almost I mean, like kidnapping. I was going to say, you can do <laughs> half of fine. that. You can tie me up, but I'm not watching The Notebook. Wow. <laughs> Deal. That's a different movie, guys. Fifty <laughs> Shades of Notebooks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, is, it, is it too lame for you, Vicky? Is that why? I just I never got around to watching it, and then everyone kind of spoiled it, so it's like I never really had an interest to watch it, because I know what happens. Could they have been dead the whole time. Yes. Well, not the whole time. time. No, they're not dead the whole time. That's the other movie. <laughs> they do die, though. Yeah. Oh, spoiler alert. Vicky I mean, hasn't oh. seen it. <laughs> she already knows. But right? she said she hasn't seen it because people have spoiled it already, so you're not spoiling anything. That's, it's, it's, you know, Vicky uses that as an excuse, but the movie itself is an experience. It's not about what happens at the end, even though that is a nice surprise. But so what? It's still, you know, when you find, you know. You know. He just seems yeah. kind of like an a-hole of a boyfriend. No, what? What? What are you talking about? She was the a hole. Well, like he was threatening to like throw himself off like what a Ferris wheel if he didn't if she didn't date him. Oh man, you have just seen a clip or like a meme of it. You actually have to see the movie because she was actually really the a hole. She was really dating both men at the same time. Like cliff notes for Vicky. Yeah, Yeah, Vicky. Memes do not tell the story. They do not tell the whole story. But it's kind of like a trailer. Like I don't really want to see it now because the memes ruined it. I'm like, I don't. It doesn't look. How do the memes ruin it if you don't even know the story? Totally me, wrong. They're telling me stuff, and I'm like, I don't want to see that. It doesn't look good. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. One other one that you guys both did get wrong. Actually, the state of the state flag of Wyoming oh. has a silhouette of what animal? Does anyone know? I believe it's a bison. Uh, Vicky, yes. Buffalo. It's or bison. A bison. Yeah. A bison. I think. A and buffalo they are would... different. Oh, oh they, they are. are. I googled I it. The same oh thing. wow. No, let me ask you guys. The buffalo has a larger body and bigger horns, and the bison has a larger head to forage for food. Yeah. I wrote that down because I knew y'all would think it's the same. It's so funny because the minor league baseball team for Buffalo, I don't know if it still is, but it was the Buffalo Bisons. So that's interesting that they are <laughs> they are different. Interesting. That is weird. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, um, we've got ourselves a uh, a big, big day to talk about because yesterday the Seattle Kraken made their picks in the NHL expansion draft. And we're going to recap how they did with the voice of the Kraken. Everett Fitzhugh joins us at 917 on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. BJ, we always love having our next guest on. He is the voice of our Seattle Kraken, and we now have players. So please welcome to the show, Everett Fitzhugh. Everett, good to have you back on, buddy. Fellas, thank you so much. How are we today? Oh, dude, the, two days ago, couldn't sleep. Today, I just feel I, I'm just, just so excited, man. I, I yeah. just I, I'd love to. I just can't wait to hear your feedback and your opinion on things, because just watching, I'm like, I, you're starting to get a quick vibe of what the identity of the Kraken's going to be. Now, granted, a lot of these players might not be there at the start of the season or they're going to do a lot of moves. I know that's not like the be all end all list, but you got a vibe of this team wants a bunch of big, tough dudes. And I just feel like it's going to be a very physical, like, you know, a team that's going to want to beat the crap out of other teams. <laughs> you know, I, I think you got a really good sense of what Ron Francis and Dave Axtell want in terms of how they want to build this team. Like you said, a lot of toughness, a lot of grit. Um, you've got a lot of youth in there as well. Yep. So these guys who, you know, the, the NHL, if I'm not mistaken, the average age is about 23, just over 23 years old. So, you know, that youth movement is in full swing. So you got a really good idea of what those two want out of their teams. The guys that were there yesterday, I was able to talk to all of them, and you can tell just how excited, how passionate they are. You've got a good mix of, like I said, that toughness, that grit. You also have some good veteran leadership. You've got some offensive ability on that team. And I know that it sounds cliche, but it's a really well-rounded team. Yeah, it 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 it's it was very it's 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 very impressive to see, you know, like the youth. I did I did like yeah. that Everett because I mean, that is the future. Sure, we would love to be like the Golden Knights and go to the Stanley Cup, but really <laughs> what you want is you you really do want to have a sustained basically playoff capable team for multiple seasons and youth is the way to go about that. Yeah, no, you're you're 100% right. And, and I think it's all about the long game, especially in this league. I will tell you this, and, and I, I said this last night on, on a couple of uh, interviews and a couple of shows, I honestly feel like the playoffs 
for this Kraken team, I think that's a low bar for us, simply mm-hmm. because this division isn't the strongest. You've got Vegas, who is, is in my opinion, your only guarantee in terms of a playoff spot. Edmonton, probably. Calgary, probably. Can Vancouver and their young core get it together? I don't really know if I like the, the three California-based teams. So right there, you've got Vegas and, and I, I fully believe the Kraken are in that and category because this is going to be a, a really good team. We've got 20... Nine million dollars in cap space left uh, to play with, and like you said, the wheeling and dealing is not done. You know, you never know. There could be moves today uh, or in a couple of days when free agency starts on the twenty eighth. You know, right as it opens. So there's a lot that can still happen, and I do think that this is a very high ceiling for this team. Which player gets you most excited? Because for me, I'm tw- I, I love the fact that they got Jamie Alexiak. That guy just yeah. seems like he's just going to like dictate how things are on defense. And I also love Vince Dunn. Like You have the yin and the yang. You have a big, strong, defensive-minded guy who wants to beat ass and, you know, and, and be a tough dude. And then you got Vince Dunn who's quick and, and can put the puck in the net. So I, I, I like that kind of like dichotomy of defense. But for you, like what's, what was the player that got you most excited when you saw he came up as a Kraken pick? Jordan Eberle, uh, yeah. out of the New York Islanders. I, I think he's the most h- established player, uh, forward anyway, that the Kraken selected in the draft. Um, he didn't really produce a whole lot on the Islanders, but he learned a defensive side of his game. You go back to his seven years in Edmonton, he was one of the top scorers in the league. So this is a guy that can put the puck in the net. I interviewed him last night, and, and I was asking him about some of the things that he's learned about his game. And he said, you know, yeah, my offense was, was always there. But, you know, and on the island, they made me play defense there. So I'm really happy about that. So I think that Eberle will put pucks in the net. He's added a defensive element to his game. That's the one player that I was really excited about. And I think defensively, uh, I'm with you. Vince Dunn, uh, I, I like him. But Mark Giordano, a yes. player who is is a leader um, on the ice, off the ice. He won the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Award back in 2017. Two years removed from winning um, the Norris as the best defenseman in the NHL. So he's another player, even though he's 35 years old, or 37 years old, rather. He's still a guy that's got a lot of tread left on those tires, and he is going to prove to be a great leader and help mold and shape this team. Wouldn't surprise me if Mark Giordano's our first captain. Yeah, I mean, hell, he was the captain for Calgary for so many years. And I hear that yeah. he's just a physical specimen. Like, yeah, he's 37, but he's not the way that he Anything keeps his body. Anything but a number with him. <laughs> right. That's what I hear. Like, this dude is just a freak uh, off the ice when it comes to, like, off-ice training. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and I saw him last night, too. And just, even, again, we're in the offseason. And I shook his hand, and I'm still icing it down. So he's <laughs> going to uh, – he, he definitely is, is going to, to, to be a very big problem for opponents. We're talking to Ever Fitz, you, uh, your voice for the Seattle uh, Kraken. And, and if you ever want to contact, uh, uh, Fitz, just get him over uh, at Twitter, at the voice Fitz, F-I-T-Z, and, uh, if you'll send him out a tweet. Uh, so Ever, let me ask you, man. Um, we're looking then, of course, at the, uh, at the entry draft, which is tomorrow. Yeah. And of course, the free agency situation. And I didn't realize we had almost 30 million bucks left to spend. Um, oh, yeah. Anybody that you've got your eye on, either A, in the draft, or B, both in free agency, that you think, man, uh, you could see him wearing a Kraken uniform? You know, I think as far as the entry draft goes, the Kraken are going to get a good player. Um, this year, there isn't the Sidney Crosby. There isn't the Connor McDavid. There isn't that bona fide number one stud. But this draft is deep in terms of depth, in terms of good players. So I think that, uh, you know, the Kraken, whoever they pick it to, whether it be Matty Berniers uh, or, or anyone else, I, I think that they're going to get a good player. As far as free agency goes, man, take your pick, right? There there are so many good players who are available, guys who just got traded, restricted free agents who uh, potentially could make their way to Seattle. And also, let's not forget, what we see now as a roster, what this team drafted yesterday – might not be here uh, on the 29th. You know what I mean? Like there, there could be some moves, some wheeling and dealing uh, that this team makes. So it's really hard to to see and to say. You know what those 
free agents could be because I think the options are, are so many um, that it, it's kind of difficult for, for us pundits to, to pick a place to start. Can we make sure that we don't get rid of Brandon Tanev, though? That guy seems like he's going to be a rock star here in Seattle. Oh, he's going to be a fan favorite for sure. I was talking to Softy and Dick yesterday over on KJR, and uh, and they were saying that you know he's one of the guys that they look forward to being a fan favorite. And I right. definitely think that Brandon Tanev, Jamie Alexiak, like you said, six five. Which, by the way, I interviewed Jamie uh, Alexiak yesterday. I'm six three, and I'm used to being the tallest person that I interviewed. And when I when he came over for the interview. I was like, can somebody get this man a chair? I don't like being shorter <laughs> than people that I interview. It's not an ego thing. It's probably an ego thing. But he might be the tallest person that I've interviewed, and I didn't like it. Um, but he's going to be a fan favorite as well. So I, I think you're, you're bang on between Tanev, between Alexiak. I think you're going to have some guys that Kraken fans are going to love. They, they may lead this, this uh, city, uh, this team rather, in jersey sales by the end of it. It's been fun to see all the opposing teams like posting like, you know, like, hey, take care of this guy. We love that. I guess yeah. like, the devil's like, hey, take care of nasty Nathan uh, Bastion. And I guess it's like, that's cool. Like, you know, to, to see that kind of energy happening where it's like these are popular guys within their old teams. And now they're they're all coming to this team. It's like a group of players, players. And that's it kind of sound like what Dave Haxtell was saying. It's like we want guys that are going to fight for each other. Yeah, and th- that's 100% correct. And, and both Ron Francis, too. Um, he's a big character guy. Both Dave and Ron are character guys. Um, and, and they want players who can produce on the ice, but they want guys who can lead in the locker room. They can lead on the bench. And, and you look back at Vegas, and I remember when Vegas came into the league and they were playing their first year, they weren't necessarily the best team early on. I think they got off to a pretty hot start, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they, they kind of fell down a little bit. And then they had a team meeting right after, right around New Year's. And pretty much they declared themselves the Island of Misfit Toys. And they said, you know what? Our other teams didn't want us. Vegas wants us. These fans want us. They want us to be here. We want to be here. So you know what? You know, and like in Major League, we're going to go out. We're going to win the whole damn thing. Um, and, and they came within a couple of games of doing that. So I really see a lot of that Vegas-like potential with this team. If these guys can come together. They've got the staff that believes in guys coming together. Um, I saw a sneak peek of the schedule last night, which will come out today at 3 o'clock Pacific time. Tons of trips, that uh, a couple of early trips that could be some team building experiences and opportunities for this team as well. So I really, really do believe that this team is going to come together. And like I said earlier today, I think that this uh, the playoffs are, are going to be a low bar for this organization. I think it it should be a mandate for this team to to minimally make playoffs. So Everett, I was noticing that we, you know, I, we know when the first game of the season is going to be, which is against Vegas. And then of course, it, you know, it is a little time before we get back and we have our first home game. So it looks like at least we have, I would imagine at least two games, uh, on the road. And you saw the schedule, so you know for sure, but it looks like we have at least two games on the road before we get back home. And, that's a good thing you're saying is that they have a chance to go out there and just be around each other, be away from distractions. So when they get home for that first game, which, of course, is going to be insane, do you think it is good they start out on the road? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity, like you said, to to come together to build as a team. You don't have that, those distractions because when you think about it, that first game for the Seattle Kraken at home, that might be, you know, other than the, the NFC championship game, other than the Super Bowl uh, parade for the Seahawks a few years back, this might be the most anticipated, the largest, biggest sporting event uh, in Seattle sports history. It might rank up there. So to be able to get the cobwebs out, get a couple of games on the road, however many games we'll find out here in a few hours, however many games those are, to get the cobwebs out, to get some team chemistry, to bond on the road, and then you come home to play, I think that's an ideal situation for this team. And uh, Eric, I give you guys all props over at the Kraken organization, just how you put together that expansion draft, the way it looked with the stage, the 
it felt like when we were talking about it earlier, it just felt like the ultimate like love letter to Seattle. If you were like doing a tourism board for Seattle, just showed that <laughs> expansion trip because it really point, it painted this city in a beautiful light, like just from all the cool stuff that goes on around here in the Northwest and, and the, the local luminaries that you had a part of it. It was just really well done. Yeah, this, I mean, this expansion draft, and I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, this expansion draft, this event was for the city of Seattle. Our fans, our, 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 our community members, our leaders, our stakeholders, our partners, they have invested so much time. They've given us so much support. We got through a pandemic and we still had season ticket deposits paid on time. We still, um, had, you know, millions in merchandise sold. And that is all because of our fans and because of our community. So last night, you, you said it properly. It was a love letter. It was an opportunity for us to show our appreciation to this community, to our fans. And I even said it last night. You know, this is going to be not only Seattle's team, but this is going to be Washington's team. This is going to be Alaska's team, Oregon's team, Idaho's team. We want this to be a full community, full regional team, and it starts right here in the city of Seattle. And I could not have been more honored and more happy to be a part of that yesterday. Boy, imagine that, Steve, if we could bring Portland and Seattle together. If, well, if, 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 in fact, it is the Kraken that unite these two cities that sometimes don't know each other. <laughs> and I love on the social media for the Kraken. And it could also be Vancouver, British Columbia's team. Because we have to reach out like, hey, you can join our team if you want, if you're not hey, happy. Well, I'm all about stealing some Canuck fans. And credit, I got to credit Zach Peggins and Savannah Hollis, who are our two Seattle Kraken social media uh, folks, what an amazing job they did yesterday. What yeah. an amazing job they do. Uh, total our entire game ops and presentation team, our skeep team led by Lamont and Johnny. I, I mean, honestly, everybody in that organization deserves all the flowers that they're going to get today and, and, and beyond. It was such an amazing event and it didn't happen without those amazing people in our staff. And Everett, I would say the same to you as well. You know, you're another fine choice in, 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 in fact, a great organizational situation. You've been, you've been fantastic to us and uh, you've done a great job leading us all into this. And I look forward to hearing you do the games, my friend. Thank you very much, guys. Anytime you need me, I'm more than happy to, to pop on. This is fun. I enjoy this. Thank oh, you so it's much. Gonna, it's going to oh, happen. Yeah. We'll be <laughs> bugging you a bunch more before the season starts. It's a blast <laughs> talking to you, man. Awesome. Take it easy, Thanks, Everett. Fellas. Take care, guys. Ever fits you again? Tweet him at the voice fits f i t z. And it is time for listeners on the loose. This is where you pick the topic, you guide the show. Two zero six four two one rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. Whatever you want to talk about, we got your calls. We got your texts at nine thirty six on the rock. BJ and Mix mornings on the rock ninety nine point nine kis. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melting craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 3 3 through 5 18 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. Will you? 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose, brought to you by Spartan Plumbing. Listeners on the loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. And remember, when you get on the air, follow Steve's rules. It's a simple rule, BJ. Show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we have to gong you. 
and then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, so I just texted and said, hey, regarding that story about the woman that was uh, naked and drunk in a pool, I've been a cop for almost 28 years, and I can tell you there's no good naked story on this job, no good naked person on the job. You learn quickly to just go the other way. Ah, dang it. Yeah, I think whenever you get a call about a naked person, it's never going to be, you know, Jessica Alba. <laughs> Although that'd be pretty sweet if it was. Wouldn't that be amazing? It's like, wow, Jessica Alba's naked in a pool. I mean, it, doesn't this to, is, yeah. it doesn't have to exactly be Jessica Alba, just someone who kind of looks like her. Yeah. Oh, all right. See, I wanted to, at that point, let it be Jessica Alba. You know what I mean? Let's go for the, let's, if it's a dream, Steve, let's go for the full dream. Well, even if she, like, like let's say you do find someone that is attractive, they're not going to be in the right mind if they're naked in public. But it's my pool. Who wouldn't want to be in my pool naked? Because I'm pretty cool. And my pool's pretty cool, right? Yeah, but they may not be. Well, I would say this. Only people in their right mind know that I'm the guy to be in the pool with. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. See that? Right. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Do if you guys I mean, want a pool in your house? Like, are you guys big in a pool? Uh, I would like a pool outside of my house. I think well, in my house would I be mean. a little tough. I mean, that would... <laughs> on your property. <laughs> I have like, you know, two feet of grass. I don't think it would work, but I really want to get one of those inflatable hot tubs to put in my garage. Have oh, you seen those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are legit. I had a buddy who had one of those, and he, he swore by it. Oh, I'll tell you this. Hey. You, you need a pool boy. Uh, at least I do. I mean, oh, I really, I mean, and all I really, yeah, because it was a pain in the ass. Because I, ha- I was a pool owner some years ago, and it was a pain in the ass. I was a hot tub owner again. To me, a pain in the ass. Did you have to do that chlorine test thing always? Oh like, yes, you all of that. This and drop oh. of this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hated that it. when I was a yeah. kid. My dad made me do all that. I was the pool boy, and it was yeah. just it was like one day. Oh, and I don't know that. if they've got like a Roomba now that vacuums for you. And oh, yeah. maybe they do. Okay, see, I used to have to do it by hand. Oh no! Back, they, they've the even day. had them like back when I was like a teen. Like they had like those uh, like Roomba type vacuums. My dad would never get Saturday those. Forget it. Yeah, my dad would never get those. He always made me do it. What about you, Daniel? Did you get a pool? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I want one like on top of the on top of my apartment building, just that way I can yep. go and have like a nice view of West Seattle. On. Oh, an infinity pool. Then you can look over right on the Alki. Yeah, exactly. Those are pretty oh. sick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have like a, we don't have a huge backyard, but I I would love to get like a mini pool, you know, just like just big enough that I mean it would almost be like a glorified hot tub, but oh, like sure. it's enough that you can just kind of like walk around in it and move around. But I, and especially with Tatum, Tatum is obsessed with water. As soon as like we get anywhere, I like got my wife's aunt and uncle have a, a pool, and we went there just for his fiftieth birthday. And the minute she saw that pool, like it took everything in her power not to to stop her from jumping into it. Like, well, we got to get your water wings on. So you get the little <laughs> water wings going, and she's just so stinking cute, and she's in there just loving life, man. She's yeah. a total water baby. Okay, well, I guess you're gonna have to get her done. Well, that's why I look at her. I'm like, we got to get a pool. She's like, well, that's. A little out of our price range, but I appreciate the sentiment. Like, I'm just going to be like that, Dad. Well, yeah. She likes this, so therefore we must spend tens of thousands of dollars yeah, we don't have. of course. Just so that she can have it more often. Oh, oh it's already, that's already started. I remember somebody saying, I'll make sure that I, we, she's not going to have me wrapped around her finger. I never said that. I just said she'll never work on this show. <laughs> Well, I know. I remember some conversations where it's like she's going to have you doing some stuff, and you go, "No, I'm going to be in charge. I'll yeah, do what I want." Yeah, she'll have me doing certain things that yeah, I like also, buying her like, a pool. Well, I also want a pool, I BJ. Was it's, say, it's, it's a win-win. Oh, I he, see. He's All not right. doing it just for her. It's for oh, us. Oh, yes. I see. All can right. I be your pool boy? You, you're more than welcome to be our yes. pool boy. Yes. I mean, Danny, what do you think that means? You have to wear water wings, though. I mean, it's like I can swim whenever I want to go clean his pool. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure that's exactly what Steve wants. I think he just wants you to clean his pool. No, he's more than welcome to swim in it. Yeah. Oh, really? And what if clean it after he's done? Uh, oh, there you go. That's the key. Yeah, and get it. And, and no and no nudity, Danny. That's the other thing. You can't do that either. Oh, Thongs are fine, though. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's all I wear. Hey, we've got a bunch of texts about the Seattle Kraken. A lot of texts. A lot of rock all. Why? Is it something happened with the Kraken or something that I don't know about? Someone said, Steve, my first jersey is going to be number 13, Brandon Tanev. He's the fastest guy on the team, uh, and he's going to probably lead the team in hits. The dude's got speed. Only one speed. I was banging seven grand. Wrong, wrong speed. Oh, wow. One speed, I have one gear. Go. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> or banging seven grand. We don't know <laughs> that, what's going on. Fix uh, that in post. Let's yeah, delete that. Okay. This dude's got one Whoops. speed. Go. And his nickname is Turbo. Yeah. Oh, Turbo. That makes sense. Turbo Tanev. Yeah. And he's got sweet flow. Long yeah. hair. Yeah. Well, it'll be, it, it, and it, it's exciting, you know, the, the thing, you know, the, to think about all the cool memories that are going to be made by some of these players. Let's go to Peyton and Redmond, 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Peyton, you are on the rock. How you guys doing? Super. Hey, Peyton, welcome to the show. What you got, buddy? 
Hi, um, so I was just curious, uh, BJ, what your favorite uh, all-time board game is and good board games for two people. Didn't, didn't somebody just email me in this? We've had a text about that just recently as well. Peyton, were you the texter uh, of that or is it just coincidental? I, 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 I was not. Oh, wow. All right, well, uh, two-player board game. I would say Seven Wonders Duel is a very, very good two-player board game. Get that? that that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I love uh, a game called The Resistance, which is a social deduction game. And then I love this great gigantic space game that takes forever called Twilight Imperium. Those three games, well, there you go. You'll get to know pretty much my life and why people don't want a game with me. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Go Kraken. Go Kraken. Right, take it easy, Peyton. There you go. Nice. So I want to know who the goon is going to be on the Kraken, like the tough guy. And it looks like all signs are pointing towards uh, Curtis McDermott, who came from the Kings. Yeah. Big, tall dude that plays defense. And like when they recapped him, all it basically was saying was, this guy likes to kick some ass. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. going to be a fan favorite. He's willing to get dirty in places that no one else is. And I was like, yeah. I like this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's starting to it's, it's take shape, and then of course tomorrow it takes even more shape with the uh, entry draft. Also, and, today we'll probably have more information. I think after one o'clock is when you find out there was any deals made. Some people say there wasn't. Some people it, it's conflicting reports about that, but we'll probably have a little bit more information about any kind of transactions that are going to be done after one o'clock as well. So that's, yeah. that's going to be, and then the free agency market, lots of crazy stuff, BJ. Yeah, and I don't know, Steve. I mean, twenty nine million dollars is that is that a good amount yes. of money to have? Okay, I don't, yeah, yeah, you can get some good players. Wow, I mean, that's that's a, that's a, that's encouraging. That's very very encouraging that you can have a really decent team. And Everett was right because uh, you know Chris Fowler talked about it. Our division not necessarily gangbusters, right? You know, outside of the Vegas Knights, I mean, really everybody else is. I guess, you know, we can be competitive with, you know, depending upon how it works out. And and and, and just like also like even when we talked to John Forrest and yesterday, he just says, hey, man, they're, they're not going to get the star scorers in the expansion draft. Now it's going to happen in the free agent signing. So that'll be like 29 million is a lot of uh, money to play with. And that's also part of why, like, there are some picks where you're just like, you just, it felt like they were picking like a guy that's just going to go straight to the minor leagues. And that's yeah. understandable. But then you realize, oh, that guy probably, they have to pick one player from every team. And they probably went with the guy that they felt has like the most upside, of course, because they, apparently they're very big into analytics with the crack. And like they, they find out the right person for the right, you know, for the team, not just with goal scoring and all that kind of stuff. But they also probably a few of them that are just like, this guy's only $500,000 or $700,000 contract or something like that, where it's like, okay, this is a minor dent in our salary cap, but we have to grab someone from this team. So we'll go with that. Yeah, well, the analytics are really powerful in sports these days where they really take a look at how how much does that superstar help and could you replace that superstar with a lot cheaper players and really get more bang for your buck? And uh, well, That's why so, they said like, the three goalies that they picked are still cheaper than just one carry price. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, and, and two of them are actually really good. They had great seasons last year, and there's there's a huge uh, uptick for both of them. So things are looking. I'm I'm excited, man. I know like a lot. I, on, if you go on social media, there's some people that are just completely crapping on it, and it's like these are the same people that probably were crapping all over Vegas's picks as well. And you just don't know until I mean, in, to put it into perspective of the other sport, probably same type of people that were pick, bagging on the draft picks that the Seahawks made the year that they picked all those great players like Russell Wilson. You know, you don't know until the the, the season starts and, and and when they actually are playing hockey. Oh yeah, and uh, these people that are up complaining are they uh, have they ever been in any situation to pick players at all in their lives? You know, from a professional standpoint. Oh, I bet they have. Most GMs then go to Twitter. Oh yeah, that's why I forgot about that. You're right. Quit their jobs, become Twitter users. That's what they do. Yes. Uh, we have a big question that need to be answered since people ask me about board games. Let's uh, ask us about this. What do Ryan Castle and Mousetrap have in common? Well, I'm going to tell you at nine fifty on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Mousetrap have in common? You couldn't build a better one if you tried. It's true. For I've real. Tried. We've tried to For reals. dollar man you, buddy. we tried to rebuild you, <laughs> make you better than you were before. Can't do it. Couldn't do it. One, te- one texter says, Steve fan- still, Steve still fantasizes about playing both on the weekends. Yeah, he does. I haven't played Mousetrap in forever. I, I, wonder if I, it's think I don't think I ever played Mousetrap. Really? Yeah. Oh, we got to do that. That'll be like crossing both things off my bucket list right there. The fantasy. Yeah. Fox, uh, You own that one, BJ? 
Oh, I totally remember that. As a matter of fact, in the board game community, I don't own it, but they were doing a redo to make it all super and cool and nice for a lot of folks that remember. So uh, I don't know if it's out yet or will be, but it's going to be like a super deluxe mousetrap. But uh, Fox is actually going to make a TV show where they're going to actually bring the game and, and make it a real live thing with obstacles, all these oversized obstacles and challenges you're going to have to run through. They say it'll require- Sounds like Wipeout. Yeah, it Very really much, does. It sounds like all those shows that you watch once yeah. and then you try watching again, you realize it's the exact same show again. But hold There's on. the putt-putt golf one. You have yep. to end it, though. You're ending it with right, trying to steal as much cheese as you can before you, you know, without getting caught in the, and they're going to have a giant mousetrap that you can get caught That's in. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch it imagine. once, but then it's, it's like Cannonball, Wipeout, all of them. They're just... Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Oh, yeah. They're also going to do a guest People movie. getting hurt's fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. That's cool. Uh, Ryan Castle, he's not going to get you hurt. He's going to get you a 12-pack. BJ and Miggs, play of the day. I should have named Steve's car. That way you guys yeah. can shoot yeah. me like I'm a soccer club. It's, it's Steve FC, BJ. Steve FC. Yeah. I, you know, it's an interesting thing. I think he's now on the internet you looking know. for, like, custom scarves. Yes! I want to see if they make any. How did this become my life? I mean, there, does anybody on this show even somewhat even listen to anything I say? What? Why? Yeah, okay. Why? why? How about scarves? Vicky decided not even to say what? She was just like, no, nah, I'm going to say why. Why would I bother? Why? Would you yeah. wear my Steve scarf? I w- I'm not going to wear your Steve scarf. Good, I wasn't going to give you one. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. If I call Travis, will I actually see him or someone who works for him? Absolutely. When you come in to see my to my office, uh, when you first call in, my staff will try to help you with with any basic questions that you have. Uh, I can give you a call back, uh, but they'll schedule usually try to schedule you for a free consultation with me, the attorney, and I'll meet with you personally. We'll talk about your the basics of your case, and I'll take you through a question and answer session that usually la- an interview that usually lasts about thirty minutes. Uh, where we'll get the basics of your financial situation. I can answer your questions, and we can talk about whether bankruptcy makes sense, your uh, your non-bankruptcy options, uh, and how bankruptcy could affect you, what the process is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Make your kitchen ready for every summer gathering this Memorial Day with LG and Lowe's. Our exclusive InstaView appliance suite includes ranges with air fry, refrigerators with slow melt and craft ice, and an exclusive dishwasher you can only find at Lowe's. Plus, you'll get up to 10% back via a MasterCard prepaid card when you bundle eligible LG products via rebate. Shop Memorial Day savings at Lowe's. Offer valid 3-3 through 5-18 on select LG items only. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details and timing.